Do words matter? Of course they do. Even the words hidden in the fine print? Probably just as much. At the State House, a group of lawmakers made the case today that words, even those from decades ago, do really matter. Perhaps it's been known by some for some time. But when it was brought to the attention of a Boise lawmaker, she wanted to do something about it. Senator Melissa Wintrow was shown the deeds to several homes around Boise. And in those deeds, there's language that outlines who can live there and who cannot based on race. The enforcement of that concept went away long ago, but the words remain in those documents and they cause some confusion for some homeowners who don't know the history of it. Joe Paris explains how lawmakers are addressing decades of disenfranchised, commu disenfranchised communities and the racist language that remains in many of those homes deeds. Legislation to correct racist language in Idaho home deeds and covenants passed the Idaho Senate unanimously early Wednesday. It's a great step on the topic, says bill sponsor, Senator Melissa Wintrow. It educates our community about the past in order to try to prevent those kind of things from the future. In recent years, Idahoans have found and spoken out about racially restrictive language found in documents like the deed to their home. Essentially, those deeds in question say that only members of the white race could own or occupy the home. Wintrow says she had constituents reach out to her after they saw it in their deed. Her eyes would get giant, right? Like, oh my gosh, that language, because, you know, it reads, it, you know, succinctly that only whites or people of the Caucasian race may live or own or possess the property, right? Wintrow's bill creates a process for homeowners to get that racist language corrected through the county clerk's office. You go down to the county clerks, you ask for the modification form, you make note of the language that needs to be addressed, and then that goes on file in your chain of title. So there it sits. So if you do uh, sell your home, when you're getting those closing documents, that modification document will be front and center in the chain of title to demonstrate that, hey, that's null and void and not, 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 uh, should not be there anymore. It won't get rid of the language entirely. Instead, adding a page to the end of the deed that nullifies that language. Wintrow says the process with the clerk's office is free of charge under her legislation. She adds, though, that this is also about educating our community about the past and being honest. When we hear all the myth and misinformation that surrounds us about critical race theory and these kinds of things, this is a perfect example of how we have incorporated racist attitudes, values, and beliefs into a law and practice that was intentional to keep some people out of wealth. And so that's an important thing to acknowledge. The legislation still needs to pass the Idaho House before it could end up on Governor Little's desk for approval. In the Senate, the legislation passed with every senator voting in favor. Wintrow says that sends a strong message. I, I would hope that would say to folks that we acknowledge what we've heard today and we acknowledge those injustices of the past. And while we may not be inherently responsible for those past actions, we are responsible in the present to uh, address those things and really pave the way for a more just and fair society going forward. Senator Wintrow says this is a good step, but more action is needed on the topic, a topic that draws emotional conversations, acknowledging the history of our country and the impacts it has today. Looking eyeball to eyeball that language and racism to say, you know, how do we address it? And it's, and it's not as easy, you know, as just fixing this need, but it certainly does open the door for more conversations and more understanding all right, Joe, 1968, the uh, Fair Housing Act got rid of this language or made it unenforceable, basically. It didn't get rid of it, obviously. But how widespread is this issue? Well, actually, there's a lot of research going on to it in our communities right now, and they know that this isn't like four or five deeds. There are thousands of deeds across, not to say the county, but the entire state that includes racist language and racially restrictive language. And there's, there's really work going on right now in a few institutions to figure out just exactly how widespread this is. And also, they're mapping all of this to figure out, okay, what clusters and what areas was this most common in? It's a very interesting conversation, Brian, but again, just to reiterate, uh, the actual language in these deeds were all outlawed in 1968 under the Federal Fair Housing Act. Again, though, this is really a technicality that lawmakers agree is important to take on. And it's worth noting that if your house was built before 1968, you might have something like this on your deed. All right, thank you very much, Joe. And you know, it's not just neighborhoods and house deeds out there with such language. Last week when we started talking about this bill, we had a viewer send us a copy of a deed from 1950 from a cemetery. 
Clarence Orton sent us this copy of a plot purchased by his parents at the Cloverdale Memorial Park Cemetery. Section 161 in Block 1 of the Valley View District, it says. From, for $275 or $270, Clarence and Ruby Orton were granted a piece of land for a place for the burial of human dead remains of the white race only, it says. In a deed to be buried for, like, for eternity. I spoke with the current owner of the Cloverdale Cemetery, and he told me that was language from long ago, back before and when the Gibsons owned it. It no longer exists in cemetery deeds at Cloverdale Cemetery. But the fact that it existed ever, as we've talked about, is quite telling. Senator Wintrow told Joe Paris today, places like cemeteries, those are going to be next on the list that are going to be under some sort of change.